Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today starts my Reading Rush vlog, so stay tuned. So it's currently 11.38 on Monday, July 22nd, and it is the first day of the Reading Rush. And today we started out in Panama City, Florida, where we went scuba diving for the day and then we drove back to Mobile. We've actually been diving all weekend. Drove back to Mobile, Alabama today. And, well, we're here. We've got all our gear cleaned up and is drying right now. I've gotten a little bit of reading done. I can't really update you too much on all of it because I don't have all of them here in front of me right now. They're kind of scattered about and people are sleeping because it's late. But... What I'm working on right now at this moment is Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Gaucho, Gau, Ganchino? I don't know. And uh, I'm currently on page 95 of this. My goal is to finish this before I go to bed tonight. I've got a bagel and some cream cheese. And uh, yeah, I'm really just going to sit here and read, eat a bagel, and then go to bed because we have to get up tomorrow and get all of our stuff packed up and loaded up in the car and we're driving back to Chattanooga tomorrow. But for now, here's a little clip from scuba diving today. So the challenge for the Reading Rush, aka Book Tubeathon for today, was to create a bookish food item. 
So I decided to go with one of the books that I am actually reading for this readathon, and that is Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Gauchino. And I've actually already finished this book as part of the readathon, and I loved it. And on page 95, Ari and Hector are making muffins. Actually, it's the first thing Hector's really making in this bakery, and he's making blueberry pancakes with streusel on top. So, that is what I'm going to make. I have all of my ingredients set out here in like pre-measured amounts to make it much easier. So, let's get started. The first thing we have to do is to mix our streusel. So I have a half a cup of brown sugar, packed nicely, a half a cup of walnuts, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm going to mix this together. Voila, streusel. Okay, now we're going to mix up some of our dry ingredients. We're gonna take one and three-fourths cup of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. And whisk that together. Voila. Okay, next we're going to mix a half a cup, which is pretty much just one stick, of unsalted butter. Oh, and it's supposed to be room temperature, I guess for easier mixing. I hope I let it get to room temperature. I didn't put it in the fridge after I bought it, so. Okay. I got greasy fingers, hold on. And then we're going to put a half cup of sugar and a quarter cup of brown sugar. And we're going to use the handheld this time and mix it on high until it's good and creamy. I do not know how people do this without slinging food everywhere. And apparently my butter was not at room temperature because it is not getting a smooth and creamy right now. It's getting like giant balls. <laughs> Alright, let's keep going. Okay, so I got it pretty creamy. I think it's good now. And then we're supposed to mix on medium speed our two eggs. So we're supposed to do it one at a time and then beat it well. So I'm gonna to try to pour about one egg's worth in here. There we go. And hope I don't fling egg all over the place. medium speed we're going to add half a cup of sour cream 
and two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract and just mix those on medium until they're well combined. Okay, and then on low speed, we're supposed to mix in our dry ingredients here. Well, I'll just go ahead and say it. Mix in our dry ingredients here and our quarter cup of milk until all of the flower pockets are gone. how beautiful that is looking okay now we're going to fold in our blueberries this is a one and a half cups you can do fresh or frozen blueberries I decided to use frozen because I thought they would be easier to work with That is looking really good and it smells really good too. Okay, so this is supposed to make 14 muffins, so I've only lined 14 of them. Okay, then we are going to take our streusel and press it into the tops. Aren't they looking good? Now we're gonna put these in the oven at 425 for about five minutes. And then while they're still in the oven, we're gonna reduce it down to 350 and cook it for another 18 to 20 minutes. Okay, so while the muffins are cooling, let me fill you in on my reading because it is late Wednesday night right now and uh, I'm pretty sure it's past the deadline for even putting those muffins into their own little video. So I'm just going to include it in this vlog and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So let's see, Monday Marty and I finished the graces and we both give this four stars. It's about this family called the Graces. Their last name is Grace. And um, the town believes that this family are all witches and you know, even to an extent they believe it and they believe that their family is cursed, that they can never be with someone that's normal and they have to be with somebody that's like a witch like them and then there's River and River actually that's not even her real name that's the name she gave herself I forget what her actual name was but she so desperately wanted to be one of the graces and she wanted to be their friend and wanted to fit into their group and all of that and this took some really interesting twists and i i was probably thinking okay it's all right it's fine but the closer we got to the end of this book the more i was like oh my gosh oh my gosh that was not what i thought was going to happen 
And now I'm really looking forward to the curses. I think that's already come out. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look it up because I want to read that. <laughs> but this is really good. Marty and I both gave it four. Also on Monday, I sat in one place at my mom's table and I read Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Gauchino. And this completes the challenge for reading a book while sitting in one place. By the way, Grace's didn't complete anything. That was just something that Marty and I were listening to before this readathon started. Anyway, I give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. It was super cute. It's about this boy named Ari who is supposed to help his family out with their bakery. His sister just got married and she's moved out and it's kind of all falling to him to take care of this bakery, but he really doesn't want to. He wants to go and move to the city and live with his bandmates and not have anything to do with the bakery anymore. So he sets forth trying to find a replacement for himself. And he finds Hector. And Hector loves cooking, loves baking. He's taking a time off from culinary school. And this seems like the perfect place to do that. And Ari starts training him. And, well, Hector is special and sweet and kind. And Ari starts falling for him. And... Then he's got to decide between following, you know, what he thought he wanted or staying where he thought he didn't want to be anymore. And it was super cute. It's a graphic novel. It looks like this. It was a very quick read. I very much enjoyed that. And then Monday between these two, after Marty and I finished The Graces, on Monday we started Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver and I think we only got like through the first 14 pages of that on Monday but then on Tuesday we were driving back home from Mobile and we listened to the rest of this so we finished this on Tuesday so yay I've got three books completed so far this week though this one doesn't count for the readathon so Bloom counted for reading a book in one place. Before I Fall is my book to movie adaptation. We still have to watch the movie. And then on Tuesday, I believe it is Tuesday, yeah, I started reading Call It What You Want by Bridget Kimmerer. And I'm still working on this. I'm currently on page... Uh, 180 so about halfway and this completes the challenge of a book with five or more words in the title so that's why I picked this one so yeah I have that but I don't expect I'm going to finish it tonight because well it's late and I'm getting tired but I want to complete a book every day so my plan is to read Moonstruck tonight and it's a graphic novel it's supposed to be cute and short and I can read this before I go to bed and this is supposed to complete my challenge of reading a book with a non-human main character so I'm gonna read this I'll show you the muffins once they're ready to be shown and then I'm gonna go to bed all right I'll talk to you later what do you think? Did I make a lovely muffin or what? Let's see how it tastes. Not bad. Yummy. Okay. I'm gonna sit here, eat this, finish reading Moonstruck, and I'm going to bed. So it is currently about two o'clock on Friday, July 26th, and yesterday I read so little. I'm failing at this reading rush right now. Oh my gosh. So I'll, I actually changed up something on my TBR. So I decided 
instead of reading the escape room for now as the book by um, an author's first book I decided to pick up A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney because I was able to get the audiobook for this and I need another audiobook but I only got 20 pages in I got my reading rush bookmark here but yeah I only got 20 pages in because that's all I really had time for yesterday. I spent the entire day, for the most part, editing. Marty and I did actually watch the movie Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver. Okay, so I give this book four stars. Marty actually gave this book 4.27 stars. <laughs> but the movie and the book, both, like the ending kind of upset me because I didn't like how it had to end, but <laughs> it was still a really good book, and I had actually seen that movie before a long time ago, but I enjoyed watching it again after having read, and oh my gosh, they left out at least half of this book in that movie. Also, something uh, Marty did yesterday, I helped a little bit, but not much. <laughs> He actually installed two ceiling fans, so it is about a million times better in this room, which is fabulous. I'm actually kind of chilly today, which is really amazing for being in this room. So, now I have another video that I have to edit, which sucks because it's another really long video, but I need to get it done. Also, I did actually do um, the Instagram challenge for today, which was to take a picture with like what fuels your reading or whatever so I did that and I'm going to do the video challenge today as well that's my plan anyway which is gonna be really cool if it works the way I want it to and right now I'm waiting for the footage to load into my editor for you know, editing my video and I think I'm going to pick back up Moonstruck because the other night I read literally 28 pages and I was just like, okay, I'm tired. I can't stay up any longer. So I'm going to pick this up. Hopefully I can finish reading this while I wait for that to import. And uh, fingers crossed that I can get some reading done today because I'm really falling behind. I would like to finish this and my Buffy graphic novel and something else if possible. Maybe a blade so black. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But if I can at least finish the two graphic novels and maybe make a dent in either Call It What You Want or A Blade So Black, I'll be happy. Alright, I'm gonna go for now and I will talk to you later. Today I'm going to do the Reading Rush video challenge for the day, which is to bring book art to life. So I decided to go with Bloom, and as you can see, my hair has faded a lot. There's still some pink in there, maybe a tiny bit of purple, but for the most part it's faded. And well, Bloom is very, uh, very blue, like all the artwork is very very blue. So, since my hair is faded and I needed to do a little something with it, I have this blue manic panic. Just a temporary thing. At least something to, you know, kind of go with the theme for today. So, I've got my gloves here and I'm gonna get to work. dried it and everything and showing you how it looks and done it actually came out a little more turquoise but apparently 
This is not blue. It looks blue, but no, it's turquoise. <laughs> but comparing my hair with the book, it's really not that far off. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Ooh. On camera, it may not show up as well, but actually in person, it's pretty darn close to the darker. So I'm happy. And this will probably only last for a couple of days, but I thought it was fun. So it is currently like 1.40 in the morning on Saturday, July 27th. I'm up late and I don't even plan on going to sleep soon because I have a lot of catching up on reading to do. Yesterday I literally only read 20 pages so I have to catch up today. So I have thoughts on things I've read because I have read things. So I read Moonstruck and this, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe a three. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. The art style is so incredibly cute. I love the art style like a lot. It's really is my favorite kind of art style, I think. But the story was really, really lacking to me. It just wasn't. Yeah. So we have like this werewolf barista. She's going out with this werewolf girl. And we have a non-binary centaur whose magic gets taken away and, uh, well, that makes his horsey butt disappear. And he makes flyers uh, for his missing butt. I mean, it was kind of cute, but it was there was just not a whole lot of substance to it. So it was kind of on the disappointing side. So... I was kind of thinking maybe a 2.5, but because of the art style, I'm kind of bumping it up to a 3. So that's that. Then I started and finished Buffy the Vampire Slayer Volume 1, High School is Hell. And this is another weird one. Because I totally expected this to be like 5 stars. But I, I was warned that the whole Buffy verse was altered for this. This is like revamping it. It's starting it over from the beginning, but changing things a lot. So I actually took some notes here on things that are different this time around. For one, it's set in 2019, but as I said, it's starting over from the beginning. They're teenagers in high school. They're all 16. Um, Willow starts out as a witchy lesbian already and wears like, let's see if I can show you, like fishnet stockings and crop tops and like booty shorts and she wears like the sexy Willow attire. So that was, that was an interesting thing. Anya is here from the very beginning, and Anya is still evil <laughs> at this point. I don't know if she will become not evil at any point, but she doesn't seem to be a vengeance demon. I don't know what kind of demon she is, but she is here, and she does run the magic shop. Um, Joyce is here, still alive, and has a livid boyfriend who's a doctor, which is odd because he's there from the beginning of this. Cordelia, oh my gosh. I think Cordelia has messed me up the most because she's very, very different. Okay, for one, she's super nice. She thinks the library is a beautiful and feels that she should spend much more time there. She's running against Willow for class president and she worries about the environment. Willow is actually a little bit jealous of Cordelia in this because she want, she's like, how can she be so nice and beautiful and popular and smart and all of these things? And I'm like, oh, it hurts my brain. Um, also, Robin Wood is in here from the beginning or well, he comes in about maybe halfway through it, but he is a teenager at their school 
instead of it being much later when they're adults and he's like the principal or vice principal i can't remember which one he is but yeah he is a teenager and him and buffy go on a date and that's i think that's actually towards the end of this so i don't know i'm like i'm willing to read more of it this one i wouldn't read anymore like this would be the only one i'd read this one i would be willing to read the next one and see if i like it but for now i want to say i'll give this a three as well i'm a huge buffy fan and it's hard to see it as so incredibly different i don't know maybe a 3.5 because i did enjoy it but it was so so different <laughs> But yes, like I said, I would be willing to read the next one and see if I continue to enjoy it. Okay. Also, I have continued listening to A Blade So Black, and I'm currently on page 102 of this. And what's really funny is while I was reading this, or I was kind of going back and forth between listening to this when I was doing other things, and uh, I was also reading this at the time, there are Buffy references in this book. So, there's one part that says, Taking tests by day, fighting monsters by night. You are pretty much a black Buffy. And another one. It's talking about, like, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. But it says, Dimitri and Demarcus Tweedlenov, they're Russian, D and Dim for short, were mirror images of each other, tall teenage versions of Spike from Buffy. Dream walk walkers as well, and only a couple years older than her, they comprised a well-oiled killing machine that sometimes pulled dumbass pranks. <laughs> and, uh, I'm enjoying this. It, it really does give me Buffy vibes. It's, I would say, if you took Alice in Wonderland and mashed it with Buffy, and she's black. From Atlanta. <laughs> And she goes back and forth between the real world and being in Atlanta with her mom and Wonderland. And she's a dream walker and she fights nightmares. So humans, when they have dreams, they fuel Wonderland and make Wonderland grow and prosper with their dreams. But when they have nightmares, those nightmares create monsters in Wonderland. And she has to go into Wonderland and fight these monsters. Because humans are much more powerful than beings from Wonderland. Because humans are the ones that create the nightmares. So that's pretty much all I know about this book at this point. And yeah, I'm enjoying it. I don't know if it's going to be a five star book. Maybe. Fingers crossed that it is. Right now I'm going to guess it's about a four star. But I'm actually going to sit and read Call It What You Want for a little while because I haven't read any more of this in a bit. I'm on page 180 and I would really like to finish this as soon as possible. So I think that's what I'm going to do and uh, then I'll probably just go to bed. So I will talk to you tomorrow. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be hanging out. We're going to literally read for a while, which is funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> beginning it might feel a bit awkward but i promise it will become less awkward for sure <laughs> and yes we want you guys to read with us yeah then there's a bit of confusion we're all gonna read together at the same time yeah we're literally sitting here and reading mm -hmm. um so it's like one o'clock in the morning on sunday july 8th and it's been a pretty busy day i'm i'm pretty tired so let's see today i had another a and w bridal photo shoot thing with another dress that they sent me and i did the read in on instagram to earn the badge for participating in a read in and i also did one of the twitter sprint sections and i've gotten some reading done I finished Call It What You Want, and I actually, I give this five stars. I was thinking it was going to be, like, maybe a four star, but the end was, like, stressing me out. It was getting close to the end, and I was like, I'm not ready for it to end. I'm not ready for it to be over. 
There's a lot of gray in this book. <laughs> okay, so we have Megan and Rob. There are two main characters. It goes back and forth between their perspectives. So Megan's sort of an outcast because even though she's a straight A student and takes all these AP classes and doesn't struggle with school, um, her father's a cop and she's always worried about not measuring up, not being as good as her sister, and she ended up cheating on the SATs and getting caught and has now become like an outcast at school because of this. And has very few friends and all of that because everybody's scores got invalidated. And then we have Rob and Rob has also become a bit of a social pariah because his father was arrested for pretty much stealing millions of dollars from the community. And a lot of people think that since Rob was interning with his father that he must have known what was going on. And, well, nobody wants to have anything to do with him, so he's also by himself. And they get paired up to do a math project together. Which, funny enough, this project apparently never gets finished. <laughs> I just realized that. But they do get paired up to do this math project together. And they start seeing things from other people's perspectives. Things that they didn't realize were going on. And realizing that yeah their problems suck and their issues suck and all of that but other people have problems too and theirs are not necessarily the worst that there could be and what you might think you know about somebody you don't necessarily know and you shouldn't judge people also megan has been you know spending her whole life trying to measure up to her sister but now her sister is home from college because she's gotten herself knocked up and is at risk of losing her scholarship and all of a sudden in her parents eyes she's the good one now even though she did this whole cheating on the SAT thing it's really good I very much enjoyed it. Also, in Rob's isolation, he became a bit of a, um, a book nerd, which I loved. And it actually referenced a few different books that he read, and one of those being the Ember in, An Ember in the Ashes series by Sabah Tahir. And I really enjoyed that series, and it made me want to like reread it. So I might have to do that soon. I'm not entirely sure when. But that's actually a series that I want Marty to read, so that may be something I listen to with Marty at some point since it's a reread for me. Anyway, finish this. Five stars. Yay. I've also read a little bit more of A Blade So Black. I'm currently on page 200 of this. Uh, a little over halfway, I think. And um, enjoying that a lot. I'm thinking I'm probably going to sit and read that for just a little while before I go to sleep. And that will be six books when I finally complete this. I forgot to tell you, this completed my challenge of read a book with five or more words in the title. So we have Call It What You Want, which is five words. And uh, A Blade So Black is my read, a, read the first book from an author. So that's this one. So I have that one, and then, where's my other book? Tomorrow I plan on finishing that, and then I need to read the Politically Correct Bedtime Stories, Modern Tales for Our Life and Times, and I will have completed all seven challenges and seven books, and I think have earned every badge I could earn. So, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm gonna go read for a little while, and I will talk to you tomorrow. All right, it is about a quarter after 11 on Sunday, July 28th. So for me, the readathon is over because I'm not going to really read anymore, I don't think, tonight. I did so well this week. I guess I should start from the beginning of what I've read this week and then I can tell you what I read for today. So I started out the week finishing an audiobook with Marty. Um, that didn't count as a readathon, and that was The Graces by Laura Eve, and I think we gave this four stars. Really, really enjoyed it. 
it's about this family called the Graces that the town kind of believes they're all witches and our main character River, I forget what her actual name is, but River's the name she decided she wanted to go by, wants to be one of the Graces. She wants to be in their circle and be like them. And there's some interesting twists and some interesting turns and things that you wouldn't expect. And I thought that this was going to end up being like a three star for me. And it kind of pulled it up at the end and I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading the sequel, which is The Curses. And Marty also gave it four stars. So that's that. Now for the first book that I read for the reading rush was Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Gauchino. This is a graphic novel. It's about a boy named Ari and his family runs this bakery. Ari wants to move to the city with his bandmates and he doesn't want to be part of the bakery business anymore. So he goes out to find a replacement and he finds Hector and Hector is awesome and he is this sweet little marshmallow and I love him and he's amazing at baking and in the process of Ari training Hector to take his place feelings form and then Ari's like well I don't know if I really want to leave now because there's Hector here and it's a super cute story I, I think I originally said that I gave this like a four star or maybe a four and a half star but I think I would actually bump this up to a five star. I really, really enjoyed it. And I have like found myself thinking about this multiple times throughout the week. As I'm sure you've seen between my Instagram and my vlog. That I, I, this has been on my mind a lot. It's a super cute story. And this completed my challenge of reading a book all in one place. I read this all while sitting at my mom's kitchen table in Mobile, Alabama. On Tuesday, Marty and I listened to Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver. This was my book to movie adaptation. I think it was Thursday night we watched the movie. I was really surprised at the movie because I'd seen it years and years and years ago. And as soon as I started watching it, I was like, oh yeah, I have seen this movie. I remember it. But watching it after having read the book, I'm like, wow probably more than half of this book is not in that movie. It was pretty interesting like the things that they left out and some of it I think they left out because I don't know trying to make it more family friendly or something I don't know but I gave this four stars. <laughs> Marty said he gave it I think 4.27 or something like that. He really enjoyed it. Next, I read the graphic novel Moonstruck, Volume 1, Magic to Brew. Love this art style. It is ridiculously cute, but the story was just kind of meh for me. So, I kind of, I ended up giving this a 3. I think I probably would have given it a 2.5, but I really, really liked the art style, and that kind of bumped it up to a 3 for me. This completed my challenge of read a book with a non-human character and our main character is a werewolf barista and it's like a world of magical beings that also lives in the world of human beings and I mean it was a cute idea it was just kind of I think poorly executed sorry for the reflection going on here next I read Buffy the Vampire Slayer volume one high school is hell this is sort of the revamping of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The story is very, very different from the original story. It does have our characters, like you can see, they look like the characters that we know from the show. Like, there's Buffy, there's Willow, we have Xander here, but the story is very, very different from the very beginning. If you know Buffy at all, you know, in the original Buffy, Willow is like this mousy little nerdy girl in the beginning. And she kind of develops as we go. In this one, she starts out as the sexier, witchy lesbian that she later becomes. But she starts out this way. Also, this is based in 2019. 
So yeah, there's just a lot of changes. And I think I gave this a 3.5 because it's not that I didn't like it, because I, I did, but it was hard to wrap my brain around all of the differences because I'm such a huge Buffy fan. And so, I don't know. I will read the next one of these. This one I will not. I'm done with this series. It was cute, but I wouldn't read any more. This I would actually go and read more of it just to kind of see if I actually do like it or not. This completed my challenge of read a book with purple on the cover because there's pink and purple all over it. Next, I read Call It What You Want by Bridget Kimmerer and this completed my challenge of read a book with five or more words in the title. This is about a girl named Megan who got caught cheating on the SAT and is now a social outcast and a boy named Rob who's father pretty much stole millions of dollars from people in the community and Rob is now a social pariah as well because people believe that he was in on it and these two outcasts end up being paired together for a math project. Friendships form and we learn about them more as well as other people in the community and things that you might not have known if you didn't really get to know somebody. I gave this five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. And it was really good. <laughs> I don't want to say anything too much about it because I don't want to give away any spoilers, but it was really good. Now, as far as today goes, I finished A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney. This is my book for read the first book from an author, like their debut novel. And this is a Alice in Wonderland retelling. And it's kind of like a mix between, I think, Alice in Wonderland and Buffy. There's actually a couple of Buffy references in here, as I said in the vlog already. But Wonderland is created and fueled by the dreams of humans. And there are these monsters that are kind of taking over Wonderland because they've been formed by humans' nightmares. And these monsters are called nightmares. And Alice is from Atlanta, Georgia. She lives in Atlanta, Georgia with her mom. And her mom doesn't know anything about this. But Alice goes in, is um, a dreamwalker and she can go into Wonderland. She fights the nightmares to kind of keep them from trying to come over into the human world, I believe, and from overrunning and destroying Wonderland. And it had some emotional parts in it. It had some interesting twists that I didn't really see coming. And I think I would give this a four. I didn't realize that this was part of a series, but it's definitely part of a series because it can't end the way this ended. <laughs> so. I would give this four stars. I will continue reading this series in the future. Next, I started and finished Politically Correct Bedtime Stories by James Finn Gardner. This was freaking hilarious. I gave it five stars. It was super short, only like 79 pages. But, I mean, they're politically correct bedtime stories. And it's freaking hilarious. You know, Rapunzel saves herself and it ends up leaving the prince in the tower as well as the witch. Um, things like that. It's super funny. I enjoyed it a lot. I actually filmed um, a little video series that I'm going to be putting out um, over the next couple of months of me reading this. If you're interested in my bedtime story series, the first one I think will come out around the middle of August, I think. But I read all of these stories out loud. There are 13 different stories. So I split it up into four different videos. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I love this. I give it five stars. This completed the challenge of reading a book that you meant to read last year because this was actually a book I think that I intended to read during book tubathon last year and didn't get around to it because I wanted to do this filming thing and I just never got around to doing it. So I did this one and after I like put all of my stuff stats and stuff into the Reading Rush website I saw that I had read 1,948 pages and I was like 
I'm so close to 2000 that I have to read something else. So last week, I really wanted to finish this one book before the reading rush started and I wasn't able to get it done in time because of all of the stuff we had going on. And so I just figured I would wait until after the reading rush. But because I needed another 52 pages, I picked back up Death Prefers Blondes by Kayla Borig and I read to page 245 which brought me up to 2,002 pages for the Reading Rush Readathon and pat on the back. I think I did very well. I'm very happy with myself. Also, I've started editing the footage from this week and oh my gosh, I had over three hours of footage. I don't know how this happened. I think most of it was because of like the scuba diving and stuff and my little cooking show. But yeah, over three hours of footage. So that's going to be fun to edit. Plus what I'm filming now. And I think I haven't added yesterday's little clip into it either. So yeah, it's probably going to be like three and a half hours of footage. Something like that. Going to be fun to edit. So I'm going to go and start working on that now. And just in this vlog here. How did you guys do on the reading rush? Did you participate? Did you not? How many books did you read? How did you do? Did you earn any badges? Were there any badges that you weren't able to get to? Comment down below and let me know. I can say I'm, I'm a bit of a completionist and so I actually managed to get every single badge available. <laughs> I did them all. I got all the badges. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you.